23XI Racing has revealed the manufacturer they'll be working with in 2021, the crew chief, the wines they'll be working with as well, and the car has also been revealed. And the 2021 NASCAR Xfinity Series schedule has been released today. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. To start off, we're going to be talking about the Daytona 500 a little bit as, according to Adam Stern, NASCAR started preparing the possibility of reduced capacity for the Daytona 500. The Super Bowl is expected to design for 20% capacity, and NASCAR might be looking at that. Now, Florida is allowing full stadium capacities for the 2021 seasons for most of the seasons, but the Super Bowl is on 20%, and a lot of these concerns is going to COVID. Now, NASCAR has said that they are looking at having full capacity, but it really is going to depend on what is going on with COVID-19 in this country. If COVID-19 cases drastically continue and increase going into February next year, I would assume Daytona won't have full capacity, but we see huge decreases and we see the numbers completely go down and we don't see many admitted admissions in all hospitals and stuff and people getting infected with COVID with the testing and stuff. I have a really big feeling that this won't become a major, major problem. Now, like I said, they are starting to prepare for this possibility. I'm glad they're at least preparing for this possibility because the Daytona 500 is about four months away and I hopefully COVID goes in this direction. It doesn't go in this direction going up. I would like to see it go down in cases so that we can finally get back to normal, have garage access, and we be able to see sponsors come back to the racetrack. We also do know next year that 28 of the races next year will not have practice or qualify next year. The A races that will be the Daytona 500, the Coco 600, uh, the Phoenix Championship races, and the five new tracks, that being Coda, the Bristol Dirt Race, Nashville, Indianapolis Road Course, and the, what was the other one? I can't remember the other one, but there are five other races that will not have a uh, practice or qualifying next year as well. We will have to keep tabs and keep watching this. Hopefully, this does not become a major problem and we can have full capacity for Daytona 500. We have to start preparing for that possibility of that not being the case. On to the next story. We are now going to talk about 23XI Racing. As earlier this morning on CBS, about 8.30 this morning, 23XI Racing revealed that they will be running Toyotas in 2021. They also revealed the car. It's kind of like a generic Toyota scheme. Again, it's okay. Hopefully, when all the sponsors start coming in, that car will look a lot better. I think it will look better once all the sponsors officially come in. And while they are going to be partnering with Toyota next year, they also will be partnering up with Joe Gibbs Racing in 2021. Similar to the position that Levine Family Racing was in this past year in front row, Furniture Row Motorsports has been in before that. They will be partnered up with JGR as the second official. They're not officially a JGR back team, but they are part, almost part, like a fifth car for JGR, even though they're not going to be officially back. So, yeah, we know that Bob Wallace is going to be the driver. The number is going to be 23, and we got pretty much all the other details. And the crew chief for next year is going to be Mike Wheeler. Now, this honestly makes a lot of sense. Mike Wheeler has worked with Denny Hamlin in the past over. Denny Hamlin is one of the owners, along with Michael Jordan, who he's really good friends with. They formed a team. And after it was announced that Levine Family Racing was shut down, we knew Mike Wheeler was a free agent as a crew chief. We now know for a fact, and it was confirmed that Mike early, just about a few minutes ago, as a matter of fact, that Mike Wheeler is going to be the crew chief for Denny Hamlin's team and will be the crew chief for Bob Walls. It makes a lot of sense. Mike Wheeler has worked with Denny Hamlin in the past. They won five races. They won three in 2016. They won the championship. Not the championship. They won the Daytona 500 in 2016. They also won Watkins Glen and Rich Richmond. And then in 2017, they won, um, I think it was New Hampshire. And they won a kind of a cheat Daytona, not Daytona 500, a cheat the Southern 500. They were up front in that. Unfortunately, they were DQ, not DQ, but they basically got an encumber when if few years later it would come disqualify, but we know that it is in a cover win, but it makes a lot of sense. Mike Wheeler has a lot of expertise. It was a really good crew chief. I am really excited for this team. Like I said, I have already set my expectations. Bubble Walsh's goal is to just make the plus. I think his ultimate goal is definitely to win next year with this organization, but I think the major, major goal for 23XI Racing next year is they're going to attempt to try to, to win some races next year. Again, in the plus, but you have to also remember there are going to be a lot of really, really competitive teams next year joining NASCAR. You also have 20, the 99 team, a track house race. You have Kyle Larson going to Hendrick Motorsports and making that team a lot stronger next year. There's going to be 20 to 25 cars, in my opinion, that could possibly 
and then making the playoffs in 2021 if playoff field is so competitive. I know it definitely be for some people extreme disappointment. I would not be completely disappointed if Bubba Wallace even finishes in the top 20 points. We know Levine Family Racing wasn't as good, you know, at this past year. I think a lot of it is the fact that one, the pandemic, and Christopher didn't get as much experience in Cup. Remember, he's driven a lot more low down force cars and high down force cars. And we've seen in the low down force package races that they have ran pretty well. But we'll have to see what happens. Again, we know Christopher is going to JGR as well. And we're really excited about that. But I can't wait for this team. I think they will, however, be the best team of the new teams that are showing up next year. I think Track House will kind of be almost in that similar position next year. But. We will have to wait and see what happens with 23XI Racing, but we knew this was coming. We knew 23XI Racing was probably going to be a Toyota back team, and we knew the number, and we know everything else about team. The only thing we do not know at the moment is sponsorship. Now, Danielle apparently said it. They're having a really big problem with uh, having enough room to put all the sponsors they're getting. Apparently, there are a lot of sponsors coming. We know Root Insurance, and I expect quite a few of those that Bubble Walls has picked up earlier this year. I expect a lot of those to be moving over with Bubba Walls to this team next year. But it is really, really awesome to see that we're going to see this team come into fruition. We finally are excited to see what happens with this team in 2021. Now on to the final story of this episode. The 2021 NASCAR Xfinity Series schedule has been revealed. I'm going to read you the whole schedule and talk about what changes are coming to the 2021 NASCAR Xfinity Series schedule. The season will kick off at Daytona on the Saturday before Daytona 500 takes place. Then the next week, we'll head to Homestead Miami Speedway. Then we'll head to Auto Club Vegas and Phoenix for the West Coast Swing. Right after that, we head to Atlanta Motor Speedway. And then we head to Marsville for the first of two races. So Xfinity Series schedule is going to have two races next year. Talladega will also end up having two races next year. They will go to Talladega. Then we'll head to Darlington, then to Dover. And we'll also be headed to Circuit of the Americas for the first time in the NASCAR Xfinity Series schedule next year. Followed by Charlotte. And then we'll head to the only standalone race for next year in the Xfinity Series at Mid-Ohio Speedway. Right after that, we head to Texas. And for the first time since 2011, we are headed back to Nashville Super Speedway. I'm really excited about that race, especially with low down for things. Xfinity Series package is generally really, really good. Then we'll head to Pocono for the only time this year for Xfinity. Then it followed by Road America. Then we'll head to Atlanta. Then headed to New Hampshire. Then Watkins Glen. Then Indianapolis Road Course. We will be headed to Michigan after that. Then we'll head to Daytona. Then Darlington, Richmond, and Bristol will be the final race before the playoffs begin. Then the Xfinity Series schedule for the playoffs will kind of be similar to this year's Xfinity Series schedule. The one that was kind of constructed after COVID-19. The first round will be Las Vegas. Talladega and Charlotte Roll, that will be the round of 12. Then the round of eight will be Texas, Kansas, and Marzo will be the cutoff race before that. And the championship race for Xfinity will be at Phoenix International Speedway. So let's discuss the changes that are taking place for the Xfinity Series schedule. So what race, races are changing next year? Well, unfortunately, there will be no Iowa, no Chicago, or no Kentucky next year. And I'm honestly really, really concerned for Iowa at the moment. Iowa is also not expected to be on the NASCAR a truck series schedule. We know it won't be on Cup at all. There are rumors that might be on Cup. That got confirmed when Cup, this Cup schedule got released about a month ago that Iowa will not be on that schedule for next year. And it does not look like it will be also on the Wheel and Modified Tour, whatever the Modified Tours uh, series is. It will not be on that schedule as well. So I'm starting to get really concerned for Iowa. Hopefully in the future it comes back, but it is not looking very bleak, especially since IndyCar is not headed there. There is maybe a possibility that ARCA might get a race there, but I'm not too uh, convinced that we're going to see an ARCA race. So it does not look like Iowa is going to be on there. Chicago and Kentucky should be no surprise for anybody. We knew that from the Cup that they would not have any races next year. Chicago is not even in any races at all, and their drag race is not going to be hosting any events as well. Kentucky, also no surprise, they're not hosting any events. Other rumors, maybe IndyCar might go there, but there will be no race at Kentucky. There will only be one Dover race and one Bristol race, and it will be the fall race. There will be no dirt race at Bristol. So I'm assuming that cup race at Bristol, it might just be cup and trucks, headed to Bristol for the dirt race because trucks has not been scheduled at the moment since trucks might be expected to be a lot more short tracks and a lot more of the bigger tracks. But there will only be only one Bristol dirt race for 2021 next year. There will be two Atlanta races, two Marnsville races, two Darlington races, and two Talladega races. Then the new tracks, like I said, are Coda, 
Nashville makes his return for 2000, uh, first time since 2011, and Mid-Ohio will be on the Xfinity schedule as the only standalone race, as Iowa, like I said, is not returning next year. I am really excited for the Xfinity Series next year. Like I said, it's not very many changes from the Cup schedule. There are a few differences, like Mid-Ohio will be on a schedule next year. I'm really, really excited for that race. A lot of road course, again, there will be six road course races in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, which is about the same as the NASCAR Cup Series next year. Cup has six, technically seven because of the clash. But there will be six races for the NASCAR Xfinity Series road course schedule in 2021. I am extremely excited for the Xfinity Series next year. I cannot wait to see what goes on there. And I cannot wait to see what bracing put on because we know a lot of drivers are returning again. I think with the schedule being released, I do expect a lot of the moves for silly season for the Xfinity Series to start taking place. I think a lot of people were really waiting on what sponsorship was going to go up. Because, again, the Xfinity Series schedule was not released at the time until today. And the Truck Series schedule has been released, hopefully, in the next week or two. Or maybe even tomorrow, for that matter. The Truck Series schedule can't officially get a release. But we will have to see what happens with that schedule. So, anyway, that is going to be for today's NASCAR news video. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe to the channel. Turn on so you can be notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Link description below for that. And comment below your thoughts on today's video. How well do you think 23XI Racing will do next year? Do you think they're going to do really well, or do you think they're going to struggle in their first year? Let me know in comments below. And how do you like the Xfinity Series schedule? And how do you feel about Iowa not being on schedule? Are you sad Iowa is gone, or are you happy Iowa is gone? I'm really sad, but let me know how you feel about Iowa not being on the schedule completely for the 2021 season. I will be tomorrow probably releasing a Silly Season update video. I will be going through all the Silly Season news that has taken place from the beginning of the year up to this point. I will talk about every series, the Cup Series, Truck Series, and Experience Series up to this point. Expect that video to be out early tomorrow morning. Anyway, like I said, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you do like and subscribe if you're new so YouTube can recommend these awesome videos out to you guys. If you do that, I really appreciate it. Anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video, and I will see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.